Welcome to Archery Talk 101 podcast, your guide to better archery skills. We'll bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert advice, but that's not all. We'll also have interviews with top archers and industry professionals and reviews of the latest gear and equipment and much more. If you're stuck in your archer skills, they're not moving forward like you think they should, a coaching could help you there. Uh, we offer a free 50-minute consultation call to see if coaching is right fit for you. By taking the first step in filling out the form to book your consultation call, don't let another day go by without making progress and becoming the archer you know you can be. I'll put a link in the description below to uh, fill out the form. Now on with the show. I'm excited. To- Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, today on our, on the Archer Talk 101 podcast, we're going to talk with a yoga instructor to see how a yoga can help you out in archery. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm your host today with uh, Archer Talk 101, and our guest today is Marie, and she's going to give us little tips on on yoga. Marie, how are you doing today? I'm good, Roy. Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited about this. You know, most people don't think of yoga and archery together, so this is fun. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your background. So I have been loving yoga since 1997 myself. Um, I was a practicing civil rights attorney for many, many years. And so I probably spent more time off my mat than on my mat for part of that time. Um, And then one day I had a realization that uh, with the help of my husband, that if I didn't start taking care of myself, we weren't going to have that fun retirement we planned for. And so it made me get back on my mat. And um, I started feeling really good. And I decided that I should bring this to other people because yoga was just such a wonderful feeling when you got done at the end of your session. And so I went to become a yoga teacher and I've been doing that for four years now and, uh, and just loving it. Yeah, it, it all, it all helps out, you know, just a lot of it's probably mindset that you'll probably get into a little bit earlier and as far as some of the techniques that you can use and um, you know, what, what would you um, say probably the biggest advantage of uh, taking yoga besides what you've already mentioned? Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest advantages is yoga is a really easy way to build strength and to be flexible. Uh, and what I like best about it is you don't need a whole lot of equipment. You roll out a mat and there you are. Um, your body weight is is basically what you're using to build that strength. Uh, and so it's surprising how strong you become just doing all these poses. And the other thing that I like about yoga though, is that you don't have to be those skinny girls on the magazines in order to get the benefit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a type of a pro. Well, I always call it a come as you are party because you just come, you do the poses to the best of your ability and you're going to get a benefit and you'll become more flexible and stronger as you go. So it, it gives you that. It also gives you balance, which is probably a good thing to have if you're in the middle of, of trying to get a deer while you're with your bow and arrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or standing on a tree stand 20 feet up in the, in the tree you yeah. don't want to lose your balance now we're strapped in with safety harnesses but still when you fall <laughs> off the tree stand it, it it can be a challenge to get back in yeah yeah <laughs> we don't want to be doing that um, and you can use it to focus on different parts of your body too so as we know with archery most of what where you need your strength or you're going to be building your strength is your shoulders and in your back that's the main part of of the release and the hold um, and so you that's the other thing that's great about yoga you can tailor it to work on those parts of your body um, although you might want to work on every part again back to the balance in your legs you want to make sure your legs are good and strong too so that you can stand up there on the tree stand <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know have better aim because you're going to have a, a better core a better balance between your legs and the other thing i like about yoga too is you don't have to like spend hours doing it um, you can do just 15 minutes a day and you're going to start building that strength and that flexibility. Uh, what I find with people is they can find the time for the 15 minutes if they're if they're starting, and they start feeling so good they end up doing you know more like a half an hour to an hour, um, just because they want the benefit from it. So. Yeah, that, that 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 sounds like you know good thing to work on. It's just a little bit at a time, and then go into you know a little bit more. You know, like a lot of a lot of sports or activities, you know, if you dig in, it's like, oh, this is fun. You do it for two hours. Long, you're sore. Don't want to do it again. Yeah. You know, build into it. You know, same thing in, in arch when you start off, you know, you might start off with lightweight. You don't want to start at heavyweight. You know, I know my first bow was 
uh, that I hunted with was 52 pounds. And I was able to get, you know, my first deer was 40 yards away, 20 feet up in the tree with a full length heavy arrow at 52 pounds. And then shooting and shooting and, you know, try to crank it up a little bit more, a little bit more. And, you know, I'd get out like the 60, you know, 60 pounds. And then it was struggle above there. And then after a while, then that, that went up to 70, you know, just working a little bit at a time and, yep. and just keep going. And, you know, one of the things that you run into is, uh, uh, you know, being cold mm. you know, in the wintertime. Because most archery hunting is during the wintertime. Now, right. when you're shooting tar tournaments and 3D shoots and stuff, it's during the summertime. So you don't have to worry about that cold. You know, you, you get you get there, hunting season starts. You don't practice as much anymore. And then next thing you know, you're in the tree stand. It's cold. You can't draw your bow back. And you struggle and struggle and struggle. But yet, yesterday, you shot it just fine. But right. today, you can't even draw it back. And then you pull some muscles trying to fall back. And, you know, because you're cold. and Yeah. Um, well, that's another reason that yoga would be handy because, you know, you may not want to be doing like all the bending poses while you're up on the tree stand, but you, there's poses that you can do that are great for your shoulders and your back to keep you warmed up while you're up there. I mean, both in terms of temperature, because you're moving your body and right. also, uh, you know, just moving the muscles, you know, you could do ironically tree pose while you're up there. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> you'd be on one leg, you know, why you have your <coughs> straps on and reaching up and opening up your hip, stretching your shoulders and your back. Um, you probably don't want to do uh, some of the, the more intricate ones, but you could also do triangle pose, which is just literally you just your, your feet are just a little bit wider than hip distance and you can reach and fold and and strengthen it that way um you can even do some nice warm-ups just this is my favorite warm-up keep those shoulders going and it also is good for releasing because it's going to get your entire shoulder girdle and just you know if you're yeah. not worried about scaring any deer off just do some of that yeah <laughs> yeah now for our listeners they won't be able to see what you're doing ah okay so maybe maybe describe you know what you're sure. doing with your arms Sure. So you, you put your hands out in front of you and then palms on your shoulders. And then you just, as you inhale, bring your arms back and around as best as you can, even with, with the tree stand in the way. And what you're doing is just <laughs> rotating those arms around. And that's what's getting that shoulder girdle. And I usually start going backwards and then go forwards to get the full, full effect. You know, and head rolls are also something you can do while you're up there. Again, if you're not trying to scare the deer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just simply drop your head and, and roll it around. Um, so that way you, you've you got, you know, your neck nice and, and loose, which is going to help because as, you know, remember that old song, the head bones connected to the neck bone, you know, if right. you, keep, <laughs> you keep the neck muscles nice and loose, then the shoulders are going to relax and the back's going to relax. Yeah. Not, and then, and then there's, a, there's a number of poses that are really simple to do that you can just do even before you hit the road. So one of my favorite poses is a pose that's called cat cow. And basically you are on all fours and you inhale and you just look your head up and you naturally arch your back. And then as you exhale, you pull your navel into your spine and you kind of make an arch in your back like a scaredy cat, hence the name cat. <laughs> um, and it's just one of the best yoga poses to keep your back nice and supple. It also gets the synovial fluid moving around. Um, so it's going to, it's also going to help you in terms of warmth when you're out there as well, because you got that warmed up. Um, so that's a simple pose that you can do. Um, and, and you can find, you can find these poses on YouTube. I mean, there's, there's plenty of people who are doing them. Um, or you could join my Facebook group and see where they, I have them all done that I'm demonstrating. Um, another easy pose is a bridge pose, because that's going to get your shoulders and your back as well. And it's the same bridge pose that we did in, you know, gymnastics <laughs> or just mm -hmm. gym class as we were growing up. Nobody knew it was actually, we were doing yoga, but it is a yoga pose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking, yeah, so of, your, yeah, speaking of your Facebook group, what's the name of your group? It's, it's um, a little long. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Nourish Yourself Now and Get Ready to Live Your Dream Retirement. What I'm trying to do is focus on getting people healthy so that when they, they retire and they want to take that trip where they can go hunting all around the world <laughs> or just hiking, they're in the shape to do it. They're not sitting at home going, well, date night is the doctor's again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and for those, I'll leave a good link in the description to get there and make it a little bit easier because you're going to try to remember and type all that in is it can be a little bit of a challenge but uh, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll just put a link in there so that you can do it or they can contact you and um, it might be easier just to contact me because we're right. looking at changing the name of the group. So if they just, you know, message me, I can give them all the information and it's it's pretty easy. So that's probably a better way of doing it, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how would they mess how would they get a hold of you and message you? Um, so on Facebook, I'm just Marie Senate Yoga. Okay. That makes it, you know, nice and simple. Yeah. Just yeah. just look for you and we'll get you there and they help you out. Yeah. yeah, I can I can see, you know, maybe doing some of the yoga things before you left to go to your tree stand, especially like in a morning hunt, <laughs> you're going to get to the tree stand early before it's even legal time to shoot. I like to get there at least an hour before sunrise. That gives me mm -hmm. at least a half hour in a tree stand before it's even legal shooting time or mm -hmm. something a little more. But during that that time in front, I can, you know, before then you can't shoot anyway. You're already moving in, getting in a tree stand, get up there and do some of those those exercises. Um, yeah, you, know, you can actually you up and get you going. Right. You can and you can you can do you can do a bunch of them. I mean, you can do a whole yoga sequence um, because you're not worried about the deer at that point. So right. you can you can, you know, go from cat cow into downward facing dog where you push into your hands and your feet and you and you get your bottom up. So you look like an upside down V and that's going to really be good for stretching your back and your shoulders and helping you relax. You could go from there into a dolphin pose where you come down on your forearms and still keep your legs in the same place to give your shoulders just a little oomph. Um, you could come to standing up and do tr um, triangle pose, which is a really, really good one for your back and your shoulders, where you uh, basically have one foot pointing toward the left <laughs> and the other one pointing toward the right, and your hips are facing the way that the the right foot is and you bring your arms out to the side and you kick your right hip out and then lean over like like we used to do for I'm a little teapot when we were kids if you, if you remember that so it's just I always do that when I'm teaching it's like okay let's go into our teapots um, because people just remember that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah. and just just that little bit would help. I don't know if you want to do bridge pose um, while you're uh, out there, but cow cow would be fine. I mean, you know, cat cow would be yeah. a good one too. Yeah, I, I can see that would be something you could do before you climb up. If you have a tree stand, you're hanging on, or or a ladder stand, you could do that on the ground before you climb up. Yeah. And then once you're up there, strapped in, of course, um, you don't want to be doing some of these if you're not strapped in in a safety harness, because you know if you lose your balance and fall down, yeah, that's going to hurt. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and 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 the deer will know you're there then. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cause you're gonna be screaming and hollering. And, <laughs> but I can see some of those, you know, like the shoulder exercise would be really good to do, you know, when you're in a tree stand, you know, once you get everything up there ready to go, do some of those, loosen that up so that when you do get a chance to draw back, at least you're warmed up. And you know, the yeah. time I had struggle with it, you know, I, I climbed up and just sat there, you know, for a while it's, it, and didn't move or nothing. And you know, because once the sun starts coming getting shooting time. Uh, you don't move right you just sit as still as you can and you know you can move a little bit but you know the deer can pick up that movement from quite a ways away and you know so once you're in there yeah. so I could see you know do it a little bit before you leave to go and a little bit once you get the stand you may do some more and once you're in a tree stand you know do the shoulder exercises to to help loosen them up you know some of us aren't real flexible in our shoulders anyway right right so that would definitely help yeah, and, and what I like about the shoulder roll, we'll call it that, um, is is that it it literally gets every single muscle in your shoulder girdle, so they're all getting stretched and then relaxing and stretched and relaxing. So it's gonna it's gonna it's one of my favorite things. I mean, anytime I've injured my shoulder, I immediately start doing that. Or if I've been typing all day long and my my back is sore, you know, that's like I just go into those shoulder rolls and they're just fabulous. And in terms of getting, you know, your rhomboids and your traps nice and loosened up so that you can shoot, that's it's one of the best, quickest things. And you can pop into it anytime. Yeah. And that, and that that's something that, you know, a lot of us don't think about. You know, a lot of the archers don't think about, you know, being out in that cold and getting loose before you draw them. And, you know, a lot of us would just grab the bow, and draw back. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we should be, even in the summertime, at least loosening the shoulders and the back muscles up, you know, to before you start drawing. Yeah. And, you know, it, when you're out hunting, your first arrow is the only one that counts. There is no practice shots. Right. Right. You it's know, that or nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'd, I'd go to, uh, um, you know, tournaments and stuff, you know, go to 3D shoots or shooting target stuff. And they say, well, we've got some warm up rounds. Nope. 
I ain't doing no warm. I don't need to warm up. I'm a hunter. My first arrow counts. You know, I yeah. don't need to practice, you know, because I, I can't practice when I'm out hunting unless you take, well, you could take a target set on the ground or take a field tip and shoot at a leaf or something just to, you know, just to get some practice in. But now you're down one arrow out of your quiver and, you know, if yeah. they're all broadheads, I'm not sacrificing a broadhead for the dirt. <laughs> you know, not unless I'm going through an animal first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a little too expensive to just give up <laughs> right because depending on which type of broad you're using you know the fixed blades you know the ones you can resharpen you know you can mm -hmm. resharpen them but after so much it's hard to get that good edge on it back on it again if you've nicked it or something and mechanicals you know if you shoot with dirt you're pretty much it's destroyed yeah and, and you know that could be six to twelve dollars a piece for them oh yeah yeah you don't want to just be shooting those and yeah. moving behind yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other, the other thing that's nice about like the triangle pose or the I'm a little teapot pose is it's going to stretch out your lats, which you which are also right. something that you're going to need. And, uh, and and it'll get them warm, too. So if you even just do that a little bit on the ground before you climb up, that would be that would be really good. Yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of good information out here that's, you know, there's there's so much things that we can do to improve our, our skills and looking at. You know the yoga poses just in your form you know drawing back and having that good form you know how would you equate some of the yoga poses to being able to stand more steady and, and be a little more uh solid in your your forms yeah well there's there's a number of them that focus on the legs um the warrior series is, as we like to call it are ones that are really really good for your legs so like warrior one you're facing in one direction and you would take like your right leg, step it back, um, a, a, a comfortable stance and you want to have your feet like wide enough that you're, you're, you're balanced. Um, you don't want to have be, have your feet too close together because then you'll fall. Right. Um, and that back foot is going to just be at a 45 degree angle. And then what you'll do is just press into your front heel, bend that front knee and bring your arms up. Um, you can bring them up to what we call like goalposts or cactus, or you can bring them up by your ears. And what that's going to do is it's going to build the strength in your legs and in your center and a little bit in your core. Um, and so it's 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 interesting that something that simple is going to be so good for your legs. And then if you wanted to switch that into warrior two from warrior one, you'd take that back foot and you'd turn it so that it's perpendicular to the front foot and your heels are in line together turn your hips so that they're facing the foot that the, the foot that you just moved the right foot in this case and bring your arms out into a T and just look over that front arm and again you're basically pushing from your waist down into your legs so you got that strength going and you're reaching up from your hips through your shoulders so you're working your shoulders your back and your legs and it's it's again another really good building pose um, we were talking about tree pose before, which is another one that's great for balance, but it also is good for building your legs. And that's an interesting one to describe on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but my training at the Himalayan Institute is to, to actually walk people through poses, so I could probably do it. So what you do is you'd be facing one direction, you take your right foot and make it perpendicular to your left with your heels touching. You would look in front of you and find some spot you could concentrate on so that you can help that keep your balance. And then you would take that right foot and bring it so your heel is either at the ankle or at your shin, or if you're more flexible up at your thigh, have your hands come into prayer in front of your heart, or you could reach them up into a V so you'll look like a tree. And the goal is to use that inner thigh on the standing leg to help you have balance. And it's it's a great hip opener, which is something else that's going to be good if you're standing in a tree stand because you want to make sure you're loose there as well. Um, and it's going to be building strength in your leg. Bet you didn't think you're getting a yoga class today, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's kind of, you know, we, we just need to provide, you know, some information so that, you know, you can see, okay, yoga might be for you. And I, I know you've got a, a, a special uh, class you're going to be putting on once a month uh in, in uh the facebook group retired in style tell us a little bit about what you're going to do in, in that on a, a monthly basis so what we're going to be doing there is just focusing on how yoga can benefit you in different ways like why it's good for aging 
Um, how, you know, doing it for 15 minutes a day is going to give you enough for the strength that you need to be that flexible body. Um, looking at how to find 15 minutes in a busy day so that you can do it for those of us who are still working. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and looking looking at, at a couple other things, um, you know, like how do you how do you develop like one of the things that that's difficult, whether you're working or not, is how do you find a routine and stick to it? Right. Because we all say, oh, I'm going to go do this, especially now. Right. It's, it's the new year. I'm going to take care of myself and I'm going to go to the gym or whatever it is. And then we start and then we kind of lose interest. You know, so how do you make that into a routine? How do you stick to it? And I like to say routine rather than habit. Because habits are made to be broken. Routines are just what we do regularly. <laughs> right. Yeah. A little different attitude and a little bit different focus on, on what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and other, other different topics as we go along, but we'll be focusing on, on their yoga and, and aging and how it benefits us. Oh, and also looking at meditation. Uh, meditation is actually one of the best things that you can do to head off dementia. And like nobody thinks of it that way. But it's basically calming your mind down and, and making it work in a different way. So that helps fend off all that white matter and keep us gray <laughs> and, and having an active brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now for, for the, the listeners on here that are not retired or close to retirement, you know, how could that benefit them? And, and why would they want to like attend a class like that? That's focused towards seniors when, when you're not even close to senior, you know, you might be in your twenties, thirties or forties, and you're not thinking about retirement, you know, what kind of benefits could they see out of it? Well, you, you know, like Roy, a lot of the topics are, are applicable to folks who are working too. It's <laughs> just, uh, you know, like you don't have to be a senior to get the benefit of the strength and flexibility and balance from yoga. Um, you don't have to be a senior to come up with a, a routine. You know, the, the topics are, are, pretty much like they, they work well for, for folks who are working too. And, you know, who doesn't want to prevent dementia while they're working? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing you want to be working and forget what you just did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially in a job like you have with engineering, like forget about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, you got to keep, keep everything straight and, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of things, you know, a decimal point can, can make it or break it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just like, you know, your, your pilot, they put in a direction to fly and they're constantly correcting their direction because they're always off. You know, if you yeah. take and you're off by one tenth of a degree and you're flying from California to New York, you won't get to New York. No, you'll get somewhere else. <laughs> you probably hit Canada or South America. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're not going to get there. So you constantly have to go there. So the amount of detail and, um, you know, that can be a disadvantage, you know, when you things that don't make a difference, you know, on detail, you know, round off, you know, sometimes yeah. I'll do calculations, I'll do at the four or five decimal places, like, hey, don't need any decimal places, because it's not that important, mm -hmm. you know, and I've got a spreadsheet, I do some calculations on, and I purposely just took off the cents, so it just shows even, even whole dollars, you know, just, it keeps me out of that, focusing on, on the little details, you know, to get the bigger yeah. picture, and Right. And that's kind of what you're you'll be doing in, in the, the yoga is looking at bigger pictures, you know. Yeah, because you look down the line and, and, you know, like like we're talking now, like if you're if you're doing yoga and you're exercising that part of your body by doing simple, it's simple stretching and simple relaxing. And, and and I think that's another key that I'd like to mention. Yoga focuses on both strengthening and relaxing a muscle, because what we've learned over the 5000 years we've been doing yoga is in order to actually build you need to relax. Um, and that's a concept that we're not used to in, in, in the States a lot in terms of like lifting weights and going to the gym, <laughs> you know? So yeah. that's, that's an important piece too. And I, I, I'm talking about how meditation doesn't, I did dementia and I forgot where I started. So where was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we kind of get sidetracked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think, um, I think the other thing that's cool about yoga is like, you know, a lot of us, whether, you know, we're, we're, well, especially with COVID people got a whole bunch of RVs because they wanted to stay in hotels and yoga is right. like one of the best ways to stay in shape when you're on an R in an RV, you just throw a mat in the, in the, you know, 
trailer or whatever whatever your vehicle is and pull it out when you're ready to do some yoga first thing in the morning and by the water or whatever <laughs> right yeah you can travel on do it anywhere and um anytime and you know just you're in it right in the elevator yep. do a couple on the elevator and you're riding up <laughs> exactly exactly freak out the yeah. people next to you but it'd be fun <laughs> yeah well if you're by yourself no way to know but if not you know do some stretching join in <laughs> I'm, I'm just stretching this you know <laughs> right <laughs> you know especially like in a motel where or you have the luggage you're carrying your luggage set them down and stretch out and you know pick them up and go <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> I guess some people would call it a, a pocket exercise because you can just yeah. do it anywhere. <laughs> you know, like like teach, you know, a lot of us, you know, what's your elevator speech? You got 15 to 30 seconds. You know, tell tell me what your offer is in, in 15 seconds. You know, that's all I have. Yeah. And you know, same thing there. You have 15 seconds, do one thing. And mm -hmm. you know, it, you'll you'll teach some things that you can do in 15 seconds, 30 seconds. And, you know, in between or just stuff you can do, you know, sitting down, you know, just take, use that thing. You said with the shoulders, you know, sitting down, just roll yeah. the shoulders and your shoulders always get tight. You know, sitting here typing, I do a lot of typing on computer as well. And, and you're sitting there typing and if your arms aren't in the right position, your chairs are at the right height and, and then you change chairs and then your arms are up like this and then they're way down and. <laughs> Yeah. And with, with COVID, everybody who was working at home was like, you know, not working at ergonomic desks. They were like at kitchen tables. And so we're all like also <laughs> facing carpal tunnel and yoga is a good thing for that too. I, it, you know, one of the, one of the exercises that I like to do when I start a class is what I call joints and glands. And one of the pieces that's part of that is just circling your wrist. And this is also something that's probably good when I'm thinking about pulling on, you know, your, your arrow and your bow, right? So you just circle your wrists, wrist in one direction and then circle them again in the other and then point and flex your fingers and pull your wrists up. And what you want to do in terms of the carpal tunnel piece um, is as you're pulling your fingers back, you want to pull them back as far as they can comfortably because that's going to stretch all those wonderful tendons that get all caught up in the carpal tunnel. So I'm now picturing really interesting elevator rides, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well some elevators are really fast so you don't have much time other ones it's like okay i'm i'm falling asleep waiting for this elevator to get to the next floor and you, you just never know some are really fast some are really slow and there's yeah. something to do and i know the the wrist rolling the wrist i do that because my wrist will get a little bit stiff you know i did yeah. you know about 20 years of hot keto and you know you do a lot of joint stretching and you know and twisting the the arms and and just kind of loosen joints up and you know I once saw they'll get stiff and I'll just I'll just see here like you said just roll my wrist one way and roll back the other way yeah. you know we also say you roll them one way for a while but you got to go the other way because you don't unscrew your hands right <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go both directions right right but and doing the, with the, I was gonna say the same angles. thing with the ankles yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah Exactly. And, and also when you're doing that with the ankles too, that helps with balance. Um, you know, I lived in Iowa for a while, which isn't far from you. It was in Storm Lake. And, right. uh, and we had ice storms that were like ridiculous. And so um, I noticed that as I was doing those ankle exercises, I was a little more steady on all that ice. <laughs> well, and one of the things too is, you know, you're more flexible. So if you do step, you know, you know up on a curb or you know on something you know that ankle is more flexible mm -hmm. and then you're not as apt to you know pull or strain something and right. you know as bow hunters out in the field you know we might walking along and all of a sudden we is step down in a little hole we didn't see and uh you know our toes hit the one edge and the heel drops in and if you're not flexible you know or wearing good stiff boots mm -hmm. you know you could twist your ankle and then then what do you do right you know if you're on your way to your tree stand you still got to go to your tree stand and climb up but with that ankle hurting you may not be able to climb in your tree stand you know right. or or you're pulling a deer out now then you can't even pull the deer out now what do you do you know right now you're really yeah. stuck <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's why you always want to have somebody with you or yeah. enough a buddy that you can call and say hey i'm here I, I need you to help me pull this deer out or or whatever you know i hurt my ankle and that you know i, I need help walking out yeah, good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and we've covered that, you know, some of the safety things for archery. You know, you always want to make sure somebody knows where you're at when you be back and where you're going. And, you know, 
if something happens, they know where to go look for you. Yeah. And, you know, last thing you want to do is be stuck out in the wintertime, not being able to walk out because you twisted your ankle or, or broke your ankle. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, even want to think of that. Oh my God. Twisting is oh sore. God. At least you can still walk on it. But if you broke it, you, you can't walk on it. Now that you got to know, you know, how to make yourself a splint, you know, so that you can, you know, support it so you can at least hobble out. A lot to this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there there is a lot, you know, that that's why, you know, I'm, you know, I have a lot of information on some of the older past podcasts, you know, about different things like that, like safety and what to do in different situations and you know, I've been doing this for well over a year now, and, and we've got lots of content out there for people. And, you know, I'm doing a lot of more interviews now because, you know, providing a lot of a lot of information and insights, you know, and to see what different aspects people have and, uh, you know, what is there out there for the archers. And, you know, that's yeah. why I went when you agreed to come on the podcast, like, well, that, that'd be perfect because this is a subject that we haven't really addressed too much is, is some of that. I did have a physical therapist on, you know, mm -hmm. a while back. You know, talking about shoulder injury and how to work on that but you know this is nice because we can prevent how to prevent them yeah you know keep them loose how to prevent from getting those shoulder injuries all right so and, you don't need you know, the physical to, therapist right let's avoid the physical <laughs> therapist <laughs> come to you first <laughs> and get the doctor later <laughs> right right well you won't need the doctor if you do it not if you do it right right, right. <laughs> well and that's a lot of good form too and, and that's why you know I, I developed an online coaching program, you know, to help people with their form mm -hmm. and, and looking at that. And, you know, now, you know, I can send them your way. If you want to learn, you know, here's some yoga poses that, that can help you to strengthen certain things instead of, you know, just hitting the gym and, um, you know, like yeah. you said, relax, you know, if you're not relaxed, you can't shoot your bow. Right. You can't right. be stressed. Um, yeah, Cause everything tightens up and you don't have the movement. And, and your muscles are work harder and you can pull and injure them. Uh, you, you've got to be relaxed. If something's stressing you out, you, you, you know, with archery, you have to focus on the first, the most important thing you're going to focus on is aim. Mm -hmm. So your whole focus is on where that arrow is going to hit. And, and you just draw back, store the energy, and then your focus is changing that. So, you know, like with some of the medica meditation, mm -hmm. not medication, meditation uh, <laughs> techniques, that, you know, they can learn from you, you know, will help you in focusing on seeing that target, visualizing that arrow going to where you want it to go. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's all, you know, a lot of mental game. There's a lot of mental game. And I had a couple of podcasts that talk about mental issues and some of the archers I've talked to, you know, their mental game and their mental attitude towards it, it you know, is, is just amazing. And you know, some of them I know are going to end up in the Olympics just because of their attitude and their practice and their, their, just the way they they are yeah. and you know that that's where you know there's there's so many things out there for it and there's just always something to learn you yeah. know whether you're whether you're a beginner never even picked up a bow you know or you've been shooting for decades and you're shooting in the olympics right you know you know or you know you're shooting pro the pro divisions in your archery tournaments you know they can learn something too there's always something you can learn and and, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get as much different. Well, I'm not trying. I'm doing, I'm getting You're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, You're making it I, I'm not, they can't try. It's, you know, it's one of those things people say, you know, you know, like, like try to stand up. Yeah. Or like, like Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm having so, you know, a variety of people in here, you know, have interview with you, which has been really great. It has a lot of good information. Thanks. You know, Actually, I'm just then, thinking there's like a couple other things in terms of meditation since you brought it up. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so meditation, if you do just five minutes a day, that is going to be a huge benefit for you. You're going to be more present. You're going to be more focused. And for those of us who um, tend to, well, when I was a lawyer, I didn't have a lot of patience. Um, I also <laughs> didn't pause before I spoke sometimes, and that was yeah. not good. <laughs> but meditation gives you that pause that you need before you say something stupid, um, <laughs> but it's going to help you zone in. And the other thing is, you know, like yogis are terrible. I mean, as a profession, we are just awful. We make people think you have to like be perfectly quiet and your brain has to be silent in order to get the benefits of meditation. And that is just bold. Let me tell you, because 
it, 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 it's not, first off, our brains are not going to be quiet unless we have been a yogi and sitting in a cave for 30 years. It's just not happening. It's not a realistic <laughs> expectation. <laughs> and so what you want to do is a meditation that is a guided meditation so that when your brain starts to wander because it is going to, you can say to yourself, let me finish this thought because God forbid you try to stop it because then you're going to be in this weird fight and that's going to just defeat the whole purpose. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? So you just let the thought finish and then you've got something in the background, you know, like somebody telling you a story or doing a, a body scan or something so your brain can go back to that and quiet a little bit um, while you're doing the meditation. I know I, I was at an event one time and, and the guy was, you know, had us close our eyes and then he's, he's walking us through all these things. And I was going through, my mind is off on about four or five other subjects at the same time. And then, you know, it's hard, you know, because, you know, his, his voice, you kind of bring it back a little bit, but, yeah. you know, you're always going, you know, some people's minds just, they just go all over, you know, kind of like the, yeah. the shiny object or the squirrel effect, you know, it's like, right. oh, oh, here, here. And. You know, I, I fight that a lot, you know, it's like, oh, going here and it's like, all right, sidetracked on here, sidetracked on here. And, and, you know, and that's where, you know, that might help on that. What would you suggest for people that, you know, have a mind like mine that constantly wanders around different, different subjects, you know, looking here and looking here and going all over, you know, how would you go about a meditation to uh, I would help just that go out? To, yeah, I would just go to YouTube and pull up five minute guided meditation and they've got a bunch of them. Some of them, some of them are very interesting. Um, but there's like, you know, meditation for energy, meditation for good morning, meditation just because. I mean, and meditation for world peace. God knows we need that, you know. Um, and just listen to that. And you know, I've had days even still with with doing five minutes of meditation. My brain is still going all over the place, but I'm actually aware of it going all over the place. So I'm still getting a benefit from the meditation because I'm focusing at least on that. You know, if I can't get to what it is the lady's saying about floating down the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we forget that that's actually a benefit. You know, um, I've, I've actually solved some problems in my trials during that too, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And oh, I just thought of something else too that's, that's super beneficial. So um, plantar fasciitis is something that likes to attack us over the age of 40. It just, you know, we've, we've walked on those heels a lot and, you know, walking in heavy boots, the heels are getting a little, little bit of extra attention, shall we say. Downward facing dog is one of the best treatments for plantar fasciitis or prevention of plantar fasciitis. And the easiest way to do downward facing dog is just to get on your hands and knees as, as what they call tabletop curl your toes underneath you and then push into your hands and your feet and come up. You're going to be basically lifting your bottom with your belly. And then once you get into that upside down V, you can bend one knee at a time, keeping both feet on the floor and really stretch that Achilles tendon. And I've, I, when I actually went for my yoga teacher training, I had plantar fasciitis when I started and a week later it was gone because <laughs> we did so no. much yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know one of the things I used to do when I was, you know, working at skating rink is, you know, I'd stand, you know, and stretch those out. I'd, I'd stand there and I'd put my toe stop on, on one of the steps and just stretch it out. And, you know, it sounds like that's the same thing you're doing, just stretching, stretching that tenant out. And yeah, uh, it definitely helps because there's times when I've stepped off a, a curb wrong and, you know, ankle twisted and like, uh, okay, <laughs> because yeah. it was flexible because I, you know, I constantly stretched it and yeah. And then, you know, doing, uh, um, I did hop keto for about 20 years and, you know, you're always, you know, working with stretching and flexibility and, yeah. you know, loosening joints up because yeah, for those that are listening, don't know what that is. It, it's an art where there's a lot of joint locks, arm bars, throws, grabs, uh, very hard on your joints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we go through a whole routine before we even start class of, of stretching and loosening up your, your wrists and your elbows and your arms and shoulders and, you know, getting everything all loose before we even start, you know, kind of probably the same stuff you're doing in yoga is just, yeah. it's, it's more, here's part of our warm up routine. Yeah. And, and then, cause if you start in something like that and all of a sudden somebody throws you by locking your wrist, it's going to hurt. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other thing with downward facing dog too is um, 
it's one of the poses that basically stretches every muscle in your body. It's, it's, it's deemed a resting pose. And when, when I first started doing, I'm like, how is this resting? My shoulders are killing me. And the trick is pushing into those hands and pushing into those feet. Cause then it becomes a resting pose. Cause your body's in a, in a position where everything's stretched and just lovely. So, yeah. But, some of my favorite stretches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of stuff goes on with with just you know the mindset and the, what the body can do, you know it's kind of amazing you know what we can do with our body and I, I know you know in in Hapkido we used a lot of uh, key techniques, you know which is basically your your inner strength mm -hmm. and and it's amazing how what you could do. Uh, one of them that we would used to do is I'd put my arm on your shoulder and then I'd use my key and I'd lock it out and then you couldn't bend the arm. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and it's just things like that. It's and I'm sitting here, no, I'm sitting here with the arm out there, locked out there, and, and I'm directing my key. Well, I'm thinking I can be talking to you, and, and you're trying to bend my arm, trying to bend, and it won't bend. And <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of things like that that you can do. That's all just, you know, the the mental aspects and learning how to develop those things. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we, we kind of got sidetracked into yoga and martial arts, you know, on the archery podcast, but it all it all comes in together. Because, you know, a lot of the stuff I learn in martial arts and learn in becoming an archery instructor, I kind of merge them together. So I teach slightly differently because mm -hmm. the, of the idea of putting the power directly to the target. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, a, that's when, I'm sure that makes you a more effective archer. Right. And, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, we learn that in breaking boards, if you don't direct that force directly flat on, on the target, so you're perpendicular to it mm -hmm. if you're at a slight angle a lot of times it don't break and when you do that you hit them with your hand it hurts your hand so you got <laughs> you know if you punch a board and don't break it hurts more than going through it that makes you sense know? yeah that makes a lot of sense i, I but, often wondered if that's what the case was so i'm glad to have confirmation thank you <laughs> right right as, <laughs> as you're breaking it just breaks you know yeah. if you, you had to condition your hands and stuff for that but, you know, it's the same thing, you know, with archery, if you're not doing a position right, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have other consequences. It's going to affect it. one thing that's going to affect something else. Yeah. yeah. And and that's where I can see where yoga might help you learn what your body is doing. Yeah, you, know? you definitely are more in tune to your body with it. And, and, and you know, you, you become more in tune to what muscles doing what, too. Um, so that comes in handy as well. And, and you can and you can you also learn adjustments in a, in a very simple way. Right. Yeah. It's just like one of the things I was learning back tension release, they had us shooting with our eyes closed, you know, wow. now we're all, we're only about two feet from the target. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could just lean forward, grab there and pull it out. So we'd have to worry about, it was like 20 of us, you know, along the, the, the backstop shooting. Yeah. And it's amazing learning the technique and how to feel that surprise release with mm -hmm. your eyes closed. It's like, Oh, that's what they're talking about. Open your eyes. You can't do it no more. Yeah. Yeah. That's, As yeah. You keep closing your eyes and then open them up. And eventually you can open your eyes. No target to aim at. It's just a blank backstop and, and no target to aim at. And, and in fact, it's better off. You don't even have sights on it because you're not using them anyway. And then finally yeah. to get into to doing aiming and you know, it's just all body awareness. And, and that's where, you know, the, you know, any of your martial arts types of whether it would be karate, taekwondo, hapkido, judo, uh, yoga, uh, yeah, any of I, those, any of those type <laughs> or tai chi, you know, any of those arts are going to help you be more aware of your body. Mm -hmm. you know, so I can see how, you know, taking some martial arts class of some kind, you know, yeah. one of them all fit in the, the, the realm of martial arts. Um, you know, you don't think of tai chi or yoga as being, you know, an offensive type of uh, uh you know martial art but it, it can be yeah especially <laughs> you know, tai chi. it's just yeah <laughs> yeah well when you look at the tai chi moves they are the moves they're doing is actually blocks and, and attacks and stuff from it yeah. yeah you know and you know they all kind of fit right in together and um you know every once i'll look over at my screen and see if he's making any comments <laughs> you know in the live cast because i i do go live in the arch talk 101 facebook group when I'm recording these. So if you're in that group and would like to ask any questions of our, our guests or me or anything, you can always post a comment in there. So that's kind of one of the things, advantage of joining that group. Yeah. And, indeed. and 
you know, and getting into your Facebook group, you know, would be a good option for those interested in yoga. Yeah. Um, joining the um, uh, Retired in Style Facebook group where we're going to have that live monthly event going on in there would be good. So you can join that. You don't have to be retired to get in there. Nope. Um, in fact, you probably don't want to be retired all the time. You know, I mean, it's a good place to prepare for retirement is where I was going. I didn't, right. Didn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> we know where you was going. It just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> I start talking. It's like, oh, I should have... Uh, uh, pause a little bit, meditate before I spoke. <laughs> right, exactly. Hit that pause and know what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the mind's working faster than the tongue can talk. And then it's like going in, it's just learn. Sometimes you need to learn to slow down. And you know, yeah, that all applies to, you know, any sport, whether it be, you know, archery or, or shooting firearms or any sport you're playing, you know, whether it be, you know, basketball, tennis or anything. And, and, and I imagine you know yoga will help well vastly it helps your body yeah so it, it also it also helps you be in tune to your body so it's interesting like when i when i started doing yoga i also lost weight and it wasn't that i was eating differently per se i mean what it, what ended up happening was i was more in tune to when i was full and when i was actually thirsty not hungry because a lot of times thirst makes you think you want to eat something um, right and so so it was like an, an interesting added benefit. It's like I was better in control of making my body healthier that way too. Yeah, that we, I think we could talk for hours on on this, but you know we do kind of want to limit it down a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah it so, was it was it was good talking with you, Roy. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'll leave some descriptions in the. Um, for the podcast in, in the, the description below, I'll leave some links in there. Uh, you know, make sure you check that out. There's some, a lot of good information in there. And I do post these videos on, on YouTube as well. So you can always check them out there and, and see what's going on there. And, and of course, you know, live in the, uh, the Facebook group. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, just get a hold of me or Marie and, and, you know, we can help you out and get you going on a little bit better. If you want to get your body in a better shape, you know, talk to her. If you want to learn your skills, um, talk to me and, you know, we'll make you that archer that uh, um, has a desire to go to the Olympics and makes it. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> you know, that, that that's that's something, you know, because I, I, I have some friends that have, have been over there and shot in the Olympics and, you know, even just shooting some of the big, there's some really big shoots, you know, here in the States that are, are really good. And it, it sure be nice to be able to, you know, personally know somebody or help or, or better yet, help somebody get there. Yeah, indeed. You know, indeed. You know, because my goal is to teach how to shoot better than I ever could. My goal is to teach somebody how to be a better yogi than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, that's what it's about. You know, it's like, you know, you, you got to pass on, on your secrets. Now, you know, in some things, you know, the student never out knows the instructor because the instructor were constantly learning. So right. as we learn new from our experiences, then, you know, the student is catching up. But when we stop, the student passes us. And, you know, it's always nice when you see, you, you know, like a new archer, all of a sudden it clicks and they take them groups and just shorten them way up. Mm -hmm. and, and I imagine you have the same feeling when you see one of your students, you know, have the, the same epiphany you know where you it's like oh i got it yeah i got it i got it or or um i was i was this is a funny story one of my my clients um before covid when i was actually in the studio <laughs> was an older gentleman who was in his early 70s and uh he, he was super 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 stiff and then at one point he turns around and he looks at me and he goes you know marie you've made me a better driver and i'm like i'm almost afraid to hear where this is going <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he's like, I can turn my head and really see when traffic's coming now before I couldn't do that. <laughs> oh. You know, but something that simple, you know, came back to him. And it was, I was like, okay, well, I'm glad I didn't know you couldn't turn your head before now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes me want to not be on the road when you're on the road, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's, but it's simple things like that. It, it, you know, it's, 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 it's not, it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm, you know, a fantastic yogi and I'm, you know, touching my toes and my, my nose is to my knees. It's, you know, simple things like I can do something better. That's always good. 
Yeah, I, I know. I talked to archers once in a while that will have an injury or something where you know where they, you know, they can't bend their wrist all the way to you know get the, the you know the the ideal grip or can't turn their their neck you know one way or another very well and um you know some of this stuff you know might be just the the ticket for them to um try some of this out yeah absolutely absolutely so, well <laughs> i really thank you for being on on the podcast it's been a lot of fun talking to you you know a couple of the things that i can always talk about is archery and martial arts so uh <laughs> you know th those are two subjects that you know I've done quite a bit of and enjoy talking about. And, uh, you know, my hope is for you know, everybody listening to the uh, the podcast or getting something out of it. And if you have any questions, make sure you get a hold of one of us. You know, we'll we'll definitely help you out. You know, that's that's the whole reason for me doing this is to help out the archers to develop their skills, to get, you know, to be the archer they want to be. Yeah. And and that's that's just the, you know, nice thing about it is you get to help help people and you know like one of the things is if you help enough people get what they want you'll get what you want and somewhere down the line it happens yep <laughs> yeah yeah it might take a while but you got to help enough people and you know it's kind of more you know like that attitude the the more people you help you put this good vibe out in the universe and eventually it'll come back to you yep yeah yeah, well, this was a lot of fun, Roy. I I, I really enjoyed our talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we could do this another time, and, and we'll we'll be get together in in the uh, retirement style group, you know, yep. on a monthly basis. So, you know, that'd be a lot of good information and help people out. And you know, those that want to get more information, make sure you get a hold of us and get into the groups because we can all help you out. Indeed. Any any parting thoughts before we go? Um, just don't think you have to be that skinny girl to get the benefit of yoga. It's there for everybody. Now, what about the fat guys? The fat guys to? especially can get into it. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to leave the guys out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you can, it's, whatever, whatever shape, size, sex you are, you can definitely do yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my name is Roy Canterbury. I've been uh, the host today on Arch Talk 101 with our guest, Marie, and uh, uh, we'll see you next time in the next podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us.